Hello my dear viewers and welcome back to 21st Century Victorian. This is part two of our home for the holidays video making a Victorian chemise. Last video we made a mock-up. If you haven't seen that I'll post it here, here. I'll, I'll put it in the cards and in the description below. It is 7.05 on December 11th. The goal is to get this video up on December 22nd. We have 11 days to make our chemise, add our lace and trim, and assume maximum flouncing. To go ahead and get started, like last time, I've cut out all the pieces. So now that all of our pieces are cut out, our next step is to stay stitch all of our yoke pieces together. So here we have our sleeves, some of our yoke pieces our trims, the rest of our yoke pieces, and the body pieces. As you can see when working with linen, what it is is an ocean of white, but at least we're making progress. It is basically impossible to see, but I have stay stitched all of our yoke pieces. So now we are ready to assemble them, and hopefully this time we will assemble them correctly the first time. So we have sewed our front yoke to our back yoke for both the yoke piece and the facing piece. Now we're going to take this and decide it's the yoke piece. It doesn't really matter because the yoke piece and the facing piece are the same. And we're going to pin this. And we're going to pin this beautiful beading lace I got to use as the trim. Once we've got it all finished, I'm gonna thread some quarter inch silk through it, um, but that's one of our last steps. So for now, we'll just get the lace pinned on. So I pinned my lace down and started stitching it into place. And I thought that if I pinned it flush, I would be able to keep these holes when I turned it at the 5 8 inch seam allowance. But now that I started sewing it, I realized that a half inch is too close to these, and I'm gonna lose the ability to do my threading if I do it that way. So what I'm gonna do is unpick this bit I've sewn, and then I think in the morning I will repin it and we will work on getting this together and the sleeve set in because that's a little bit much for 8.40 at night when I've been up since 5.30 a.m. Good morning, my dear viewers. It is 9.45 a.m. on December 12th. I have, last night I unpicked the bit of lace I was unhappy with. Um, luckily I had only sewn about six inches so it didn't take too long to unpick. And now I'm going to repin it in a position I think I'll be happier with check it by just kind of flipping it over and seeing if I like it, and then tack that down and put the facing and the bodice piece, no, first I'll put the sleeves in, and then we put the facing and the bodice pieces together. I was hoping to get to putting the bodice and yoke together by the end of today, but I've also had an overnight migraine, so we'll see how far we get today. So I've added in my lace now, as you can see here. When it gets flipped over, I think I'll be pretty happy with where the lace trim ends up in the beading lace. 
Um, the next step is to run two lines of gathering stitches into the head of the sleeve. So this is where the shoulder meets the yoke piece. Last time in the mock-up I did this on the machine and I wasn't really happy with it because I wasn't able to line up the stitches for the gathers and so I just felt like they were messier. So this time I'm going to hand base my gathers in which should only take a few minutes. It is 10.30 so as soon as I've got that in I think I'm going to take a quick snap break and then get back to it. So it is 12.16, I have taken a snack break that turned into more of a lunch break, but I have also gotten both sets of running stitches for the gathering done. So I'm ready to gather the sleeves into the yoke, and then I believe after that I sew the two yoke pieces together. I'm a little bit torn about whether or not I want to sew the sleeves in by hand or if I want to do them on the machine. The problem with doing on the machine is that you tend to move your gathers. And so it, even if you have worked very hard to stroke your gathers well, it doesn't quite end up the way you want it to be. So I think I may just do a running back stitch after I've got them gathered since it's a fairly short seam. So to do this next step, what I have to do is line this pattern mark and this pattern mark up. And I just like to pin that there so that I know kind of where I want it to be. And then I like to take the other pattern mark, which is here, and the other one on the sleeve, and pin those together. And now I know what I need to gather my sleeve into. So, we're going to pull on our long tails for our gathering stitches. you can see that it starts to gather into the shape we need it to be. And then you just want to stroke your gathers along this line so that they end up being about the same size and evenly spaced. Once you think you're starting to get to where you want, I just like to pin it in place. So it is 12.57. I got all of the gathering and easing in the shoulder seam done. I actually did end up doing it on the machine because I remembered just how much facing I'm going to have to sew in. and. Sometimes on migraine days, we make adjustments as we need to. I did machine sew that in, and now we're going to attach the facing to the yoke, and then we get the joy of easing in the body seam again. It's 3.20 p.m. I took a break to film for the other video I owe you, which is the History Bound and Capsule Wardrobe skirt that is finished. That being said, I've gotten my sleeves put in. I've pressed and clipped those seams so that they sit nicely. I've sewn the yoke lining to the yoke itself. I now have to turn these and press them, make sure all the seams are clipped, and then we put the body pieces into the yoke pieces. And after that it will look more like a chemise and less like a weird bolero that doesn't work. So my dear viewers, when I started this channel I decided that one of the things that was important to me was to share when I make mistakes, even major ones, because I find some of the existing channels intimidating since we don't really get to see that or it looks like they're so advanced we'll never get there. So I'm going to share the really big mistake I realized I just made. When I did my mock-up I wound up cutting my yoke and putting in a triangle shaped gusset 
so that I could reach my arms forward because otherwise it was too tight through the back shoulders. What I needed to do when I made my new piece was put that gusset in the yoke pattern and make sure that I cut it out of my linen, which I completely failed to do. There's really nothing for this except to completely remake this yoke. Luckily I have leftover linen, so I can remake them and this isn't a huge amount of fabric, just more effort than I wanted to spend making a yoke I couldn't use. So I'm going to go work on that and I will meet you when we are back at this stage again because you don't really need to watch me put this yoke together twice any more than I was looking forward to putting it together twice. But this is how we get better. Hello my dear viewers, it is 9.28 on December 19th. I have spent about the last week fixing the mistakes from last weekend. Well, I've mostly spent it working, but I've also fixed the mistakes from last weekend. So we have our chemise yoke with our beautiful set in sleeves. And I have gone ahead and turned down the inside facing and whip stitched it with very tiny Victorian uh, whip stitches to hold it in place. I had to cut new yoke pieces and then because I had already cut the seam allowance on the sleeves for the other yoke, I also had to cut new sleeve pieces. But here we are, ready to get back to it and sew the yoke to the body of this dress. So hopefully we will have this finished today. Fingers crossed. So now we're gonna stay stitch the front of the shift along these two curves so that we can then gather them into the yoke. It's now 11.33, I've done my stay stitching. I also went and checked where the pin tucks were gonna be, so my pin tucks are marked correctly and those are ready to go. I'm now working on gathering the top of the front and back into the yoke. This was the part that gave me a really hard time last time, so I think I'm gonna end up gathering it in getting it all fitted, and then doing a running back stitch to secure it on instead of doing it on the machine. So it's gonna take a little bit longer, but hopefully the effect is better. I'm also going to break for lunch and then finish my gathering of the front. It's 12.09, I have had my lunch, I have finished my gathering, and it is now time for the, I will say, challenging task of fitting this front bodice piece into this front yoke bit. Um, on the mock-up, this is what gave me quite a bit of trouble, so we'll see how it goes on the linen. One of the things to be careful of here is that you're only sewing the front to it. You're actually going to use the yoke facing to cover the raw seam like we did on the sleeves. So I find that if I make sure to match up the notches, which are here and here, It is then much easier to know exactly how much I need to do to gather this curve into this curve. And then I'm just going to find my strings, threads, and start to pull and kind of stroke the gathers along those threads. So it looks like now we're at about the right length. So I'll tie off these two threads. And I'm really just making a square knot. And then I will I'm gonna stroke these along. Just gonna keep stroking these along until they're about even, which that looks pretty even. 
And then for now I'm gonna pin it, but once it's all together, I may actually thread baste it, I haven't decided. It's 2.38, so a bit later than I was hoping it would be, but I have gotten the front yoke sewn to the front of the shift. Now to sew the back in, we're back at our keyhole backstage. Um, I remember this also being a bit of a bear from the mock-up, so we'll see how it goes. I did machine stitch the front down just because if it was going to get finished anytime soon, I, I realized that's what I need to do. Especially since I am still going to have to hand sew the facings in when we get to that stage. After I've put the back in, we sew up the sides. I'm going to do those with French seams so that I don't have to finish the seam which is also what some of the historical texts I looked at suggested. So it is 3.49. I have gathered my back in. I didn't film more video of the gathering stitches because it looked just like all the other gathering stitches on the white linen that I've done today and last weekend. So now I have to fit this and this together, which I'm sure is going to be a bear, but at least then we get to sew up the side seams. Okay, so I want to very angrily pause here for a moment and talk about why this part of the pattern is the worst. I had a horrible time with it on the mock-up, not having any easier of a time on the linen, and whoever decided that this was a thing that should be a thing in Victorian underwear really needs to figure out what they're doing with their life. So, so you can see here that I have basically made fringe. Out of that seam allowance. I've cut the type of little, I've made the little gores you're supposed to make so that it will spread. I have cut them deep and pinned them very carefully and I still have this much of the curve to ease in. I haven't even started on the other side. I don't, why? Who made this choice? Why is this a thing? So I'm gonna take a moment and then keep making fringe out of my seam allowance and just kind of hope for the best. The other problem I have found with linen is that because this linen is such an open weave, it just kind of starts pulling apart. So I don't know how fine I can get this seam allowance to get it to ease in without just ending up with threads and unraveling the fabric. Okay, but seriously, Victorian tailors, why? Why are these curves so different? Why is this so hard? It is 7.45 p.m. I have finally gotten the back gathered into the yoke. I meant every word that I said about Victorian dress making and I take none of it back, but at least we've gotten to this point. So next we have to sew the side seams up. The thing to remember about this is I am doing French seams, which are a little counterintuitive because you do wrong sides together and then right sides together. Here I am turning under the seam allowance on the yoke lining so that I can pin it to the front and back of the body pieces and then again do my tiny Victorian whip stitches to secure it down. I found that putting it on my dress form made trying to do this kind of turning a lot easier. Good morning, my dear viewers. It's 11 a.m. on Sunday, December 20th. This morning I got the back yoke facing sewn in and now I just have the front yoke facing to sew in. These are, again, the very tiny little whip stitches. So it is taking a while. I'm still really hoping I will manage to get this finished today so that I can go ahead and start editing this video, but we'll see. It's 12.55, I finally have all of the facings sewn in the inside. And I now just have to tack down the front closure. And then I've decided that instead of doing buttonholes, I'm actually gonna use the ribbon to close it. We'll see how that works. And then pen tucks and trims. <laughs> All 
right, so it's 140. I'm a little bit disappointed with how the front of the shift worked out, but we're just gonna move on for now. What I'm currently doing is running basting stitches into where the pin tucks are gonna be. So I'm, it, you probably can't tell on the camera, but I marked the pin tucks in pencil on the wrong side of the fabric. But pin tucks need to be sewn from the right side. And so the pattern has six rows of pin tucks on it. And that's what I had initially planned to do. I'm not sure we have time for that. And the other thing is, so I could always just do like five pin tucks and then add more later. So I wanna show, I want to show you this bottom here for a minute. I've laid it out so that they're ostensibly lined up, but as you can see, my linen kind of walked while I was cutting it clearly. So one of the things I'm gonna need to do is even up this bottom, which I'm about to do. I think I'm gonna do that and then attach the embroidery on glaze to the bottom here. Attach the trimmer on the sleeves and then just see how many more of these pin tucks I can do. It's 3 p.m. We took a break and went for a walk. And now I am attaching the embroidery unglaze to the bottom of the shift. I did my first pin tuck. I am going to do more, but I wanted to go ahead and do the embroidery unglaze at the bottom. I trimmed up the bottom where my linen had walked but I also realized that because the linen had walked, now my bottom pin tuck is gonna to be too low. So I'm going to have to move, if I want six lines of pin tucking, I will have to move one pin tuck up above what the first line is. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do there yet. But I am going to go ahead and hem in at the one inch seam allowance that was allowed for the hem and attach the embroidery on glaze there, and then figure out what I wanna do with the pin tuck. I went ahead and hemmed the sleeves. I didn't add the lace trim because I didn't have enough after having to redo the yoke, but I may go back and pull off what's on the old yoke and add it to the sleeves later. And then I added the embroidery on glaze and hemmed the bottom of the shift. Hello, my dear viewers. It is Tuesday, December 22nd. It is 3.37 p.m. This video is obviously not going up Wednesday, December 23rd, but we are pushing towards the 24th. We are nothing if not adaptable. So I have added the embroidery on glaze and sewn the beautiful pin tucks down at the bottom. And all I have left to do at this point is finish Sewing down the lace around the collar, I kind of didn't like the way it stuck up, so I've just been running a quick whip stitch to hold it down and thread the ribbon through. I'm about halfway through that. Um, in fact, I'm exactly halfway through that. So my goal is to sit here for another hour or two, maybe get the last bit of this knocked out, and then show you what the finished product looks like. It's 4.27 p.m. and I have finished sewing down my lace around the collar. All I have to do is thread through the beautiful silk ribbon I have for the beading lace. And then we are ready to optimize our flouncing. And here I finally get to take my yarn needle and thread my silk ribbon through my beading lace. I really love this effect and I'm so happy with it. And here it is finished. Now all I need is my Nutcracker from Godfather Drosselmeyer and I'm prepared for all of my holiday fantasies.
As you can see, I have finished my home for the holiday shift and am now prepared for optimal holiday flouncing. The bunnies don't even know what's coming. I'm really thrilled with how the beading lace worked out with the lace trim. I'm a little bit disappointed because the shoulders ended up a bit broad. I'm wondering if the original yoke that I cut might not have actually been better. Maybe the linen has a bit more give in it than my mock-up fabric. So were I to make this again, I would probably try the smaller yoke size first. While it's not perfect, I'm really proud of it. I'd never worked with linen before, I'd never tried some of these trims, and I think overall it came out really well. I'm excited to have something to flounce through the holidays with. And I hope that in this year of pestilence, both your Home for the Holidays project and your holidays themselves, whatever you celebrate, are as wonderful as they can be. And I'm very much looking forward to a better new year. How is your Home for the Holidays project going? Or your non-holiday related sewing? What do you have planned for next year? I have a couple new projects I'm really excited about that I'll be sharing in the coming weeks. But for now, I will bid you adieu and wish you again happy holidays and a most joyous of new years.